And welcome to Hannity, and we are in beautiful Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Hi, Iowa, how are you? We have a crowd of thousands. Many, by the way, started lining up yesterday, and we're outside. How many of you slept outside overnight? Thank you for coming. We appreciate it. Uh, to get a spot inside today, but they're not just here to see yours truly. Boo. Um, sorry. No, in a moment, the 45th president of the United States, current GOP frontrunner, Donald J. Trump, will join us for an exclusive town hall. We have a lot of ground to cover tonight. Now, today we learned that Biden's Department of Justice is likely pursuing even more charges against President Biden's chief political rival. According to Donald Trump, through uh, Truth Social, he said Joe Biden's DOJ sent a letter that I am the target of the January 6th grand jury investigation and giving me a very short four days to report to the grand jury, which almost always means an arrest and an indictment. Now, tonight, President Trump is vowing to fight any and all politically charged indictments. And if elected, he is also planning to completely reform America's two-tiered system of justice and weaponized justice system. So without further ado, joining us now to explain for the full hour tonight, the 45th president of the United States, Donald J. Trump, is with us. You know, I came out here and they started chanting Trump, and I said, My name's Sean. Well, you know, uh, if you like, you can grab a seat. If you don't want, you want to stand, we can stand. Whatever you prefer is fine with me. We'll stand later. All right. Thank you. Thank you for doing this town hall. Um, it's great to see you. Uh, you look well, you look healthy. Feel good, feel good. Let me ask you uh, just a, a basic fundamental question. You have all of these never ending attacks. Yeah. And you released on Truth Social earlier today that they now, that you are a target of this January 6th grand jury. My, my first question to you is, you, you, it doesn't seem to bother you like I think it would bother so many other people. What, what is it about you that it doesn't? No, it bothers me. It bothers me for everybody in this incredible sold-out audience. And it's, uh, it bothers you. I got the uh, letter on Sunday night. Think of it. I don't think they've ever sent a letter on Sunday night. And they're in a rush because they want to interfere. It's interference with the election. It's election interference. Never been done like this in the history of our country, and it's a disgrace. What's happening to our country, whether it's the borders or the elections or kinds of things like this where the DOJ has become a weapon for the Democrats, an absolute weapon. And it seems that every time my polls, you know, we're leading by a lot. And we're leading by a lot in a place called Iowa, a lot. And, and not only with the Republicans, but we're leading against Biden by a tremendous amount. They haven't seen anything like it. And they feel, I guess, they want to try and demean and diminish and and uh, frighten people, but they don't frighten us because uh, we're going to make America great again. That's all there is. We're going to make our, our country. Our country, Sean, is a mess. You know it better than anybody. I mean, frankly, your reporting is incredible. I, I'll evening, be honest. I have never been more fearful of the state of this country than I am right now. Yeah. Fearful about the economy, foreign policy, our future, our kids, our grandkids. I've never been this way. Well, you look at Biden with these leaders, and they're at the top of their game, and they're looking at each other like they don't even believe what's happening. Our country is no longer respected. Think of it. Three years ago, energy independent, powerful military that was totally rebuilt. The president announced three days ago, which he should never have said, probably classified information, that we have no ammunition. 
Now, what do you think China says when they hear we have no ammunition? Uh, no, it's a very, very sad thing. If you look at the worst border in history, we had the best border in history. We had, three years ago, the best border we've ever had. We built hundreds of miles of wall. We got Mexico free of charge. You know, they say about Mexico. Mexico gave us billions of dollars worth of soldiers for years, 28,000 soldiers guarding our border. We had the best numbers we've ever had. Today we have, I think, the worst numbers in the world, because I don't think there's any country in the world that would stand for what's happening to us with millions of people flowing in from, by the way, mental institutions, insane asylums. They don't like me using those names, insane asylums. But we have very bad, very sick people, very ill people coming into our country, prisons and jails all over the world. And it's not the four countries that we sort of consider neighbors. It's all over. Last week, we had 129 countries, representatives of people that came into our country illegally. And we're losing our country, and we're losing the spirit of our country. But I will tell you, make America great again, and MAGA, and America first, and all of these things that we talk about, there's never been more spirit. Look at this crowd. There's never been more spirit than we have right now. 2024. Twenty twenty four is the most important election that we've ever had. You know, and I used to say it with twenty sixteen and I meant it a hundred percent, but we're now we're going into an almost a communistic state, and I think maybe we're even there. When you look at what they're doing with you could call it fascist, you could call it Marxist, you could call it communist, what they're doing, like with the Department of Justice, they've totally weaponized it. It's weaponized. Like, we've never had this before. It's not only me. Catholics, you see what's happening? Uh, parents at school boards, they're being harassed by the Justice Department, by the FBI. Nobody's ever seen what's happening right now. And we have a guy, the head of this country, it's, it's probably not him, it's people around him. They have people that are vicious and smart and have horrible ideas for our country. So it's really the people, in my opinion, because I don't think this guy can put together two sentences. I watched him last night. He's almost, he's almost incapable of talking. And you know, we have- I'm not, I'm not sure he knows today's Tuesday, sir. Well, we have, a, we have a problem. We have the potential of a war beyond the war with Russia and Ukraine, and that would have never happened before. By the way, if I were president, that would have never happened. If I were president, Ukraine and Russia. I want to get to that. You know, I came here today and I've, I've watched all of, I watched two hours with Mark Levin, I watched your hour yeah. with Tucker, I watched your hour um, uh, who, who, with Brett Baer, you did two hours with me, I watched you on Maria, I, I watched your interviews. And I, on fake news, CNN, um, I watched that too. Well, that was a good one. That oh. was a good one. They had a town that was, hall. That was a Trump They class. ended up firing the head of CNN. Because, yeah. And they got the highest ratings in 11 years, and they fired. It's supposed to be the opposite. By the way, you might want to start a show, and at the end of every show, say to somebody, you're fired. That would work, right? You're fired. Uh, all right. Let, but I wanted to talk about the problems and the solutions. In other words, what are the, identify the problems and the solutions. Okay. We cannot ignore today's events, today when you put out your, your truth yeah. social post. And by that, I want to talk about what is clearly now and what the Judiciary Committee under Jim Jordan is looking into, whether or not our FBI and our Department of Justice have been weaponized and politicized. And I have two headlines here. You know, FBI tipped off Biden team, Secret Service, about plan to interview Hunter, according to a supervisory right. agent who retired. Tomorrow, there will be another IRS whistleblower, just like this man, Mr. Chapley, who came out and said, no, he should have been indicted on felony charges, and I've been doing this, meaning Hunter Biden. Then I can take you back, and you know that I covered this every single night, and my show was vindicated on the issue right. of Trump-Russia collusion that never occurred. The Durham report corroborated it, the Horowitz report. It's a long way of me asking this very simple, basic question. And that is, if you look at Hillary Clinton and the way she was treated, no prosecutor would prosecute, 33,000 subpoenaed emails deleted, devices destroyed. Then her dirty dossier. And that dossier was used to get four FISA warrants. And then you look at the FBI in 2019. 
They had Hunter Biden's laptop in December of 2019. They verified it in March of 2020. And yet FBI agents in the months leading up to that election were meeting with big tech companies, telling them, according to Yoel Roth, the former Twitter integrity site head, telling them that it might be about Joe or Hunter. That laptop story got censored. The American people were denied the truth about what would be a bombshell story. And by the way, it still is censored because they haven't really gotten into the meat with all of the great reporting done, and this has been some great reporting done. Generally speaking, the press is fake. It's fake, and it's just uh, horrible, actually. But there's still been some great reporters and great reporting done, and you are at the lead. You've been incredible. But when you look, but Sean, when you look at that, they haven't even gotten to the bottom of the laptop. They don't want to put the pictures in. They don't want to, they have pictures in there that anybody else, they go away for 10 years. What happened to Hunter is he got a traffic ticket. Other people are being sentenced to many years in jail for doing much less. He got a traffic ticket. The only good thing is the people know it's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. Now, uh, Jim Jordan and Jamie Comer, these guys are doing a great job. But the problem is you find out the crime, but nothing happens with it. Instead, they go after you. Like, for example, Hillary Clinton's home wasn't raided. Yeah. Joe Biden's garage wasn't raided. The UPenn Center wasn't raided. The University of Delaware wasn't raided. His home, beach home, I don't know how he affords a beach home on a senator's salary, that wasn't raided. Hunter Biden was being protected, obviously. Um, Cocaine in the White House, 10-day investigation. They they literally interviewed nobody. Okay, investigation's over. Would that have happened in your White House? Well, Well, listen to this. Even you mentioned the beach home. Well, the beach home had all these documents in it, right? It was by the Corvette. They're on the floor. Classified documents. No, that's not the place. beach home. That, the beach home was another place no, they no, found. No, no, this is also the beach home. And they had the Corvette, where they had the Corvette. Yeah. And a tremendous amount of payment was made for that home by somebody to Joe Biden. And it was a big story for about one day. And then you don't hear about it anymore. It's incredible. But when you look at the documents all over the place, whatever happened to that one? They go after me on documents, and I have the Presidential Records Act, which is a big deal. And the Presidential Records Act is a is is an act. <laughs> Thank you. They Why know weren't the, their they homes know better raided than anybody else? Why weren't their homes raided? Well, let me just tell you, I'm protected by Presidential Records Act, and they come up with this obscure, crazy theory, a madman theory. This guy is a deranged prosecutor who's had tremendous failures all over the place. He's a nasty, horrible human being. They come after me. Now, they have, Biden has many, many, thousands. I mean, he's got 2,000, almost 2,000 boxes of documents. They can't get to him because the college or whatever that has him doesn't want to give him. But, and he probably told the college. But more importantly, China gives millions of dollars to UPenn. That's where he has some. He's got them all over the place. And maybe worst of all, he's got documents in Chinatown in Chinatown, many, many documents, boxes of documents. You don't ever hear about this. All you hear about is Trump. And I'm totally covered by the Presidential Records Act and also by the Clinton socks case. You know what that is. That's where Clinton took out tapes in his socks and he put them in his drawer. And they sued him just on a very civil basis. And he ended up winning the lawsuit. And the judge said he can have whatever he wants. And that's called the presidential records. What about Sandy Berger shoving documents down his pants? Oh, there are many instances of it. But especially when you're president and Joe Biden wasn't president. You're only covered by the Presidential Records Act if you're president. Joe Biden wasn't president. In fact, Joe Biden was senator for many years. And they've got a lot of classified documents when he was senator. And other Democrat senators can't even believe the fact that he has these documents. Can't even. They said, I watched... Dick Durbin, here's another beauty. I watched Dick Durbin <laughs> saying, I can't believe that he took them. I couldn't, he couldn't even believe it. So it's a very, it's a two-tier system, but it's worse than that. It's a very corrupt system. Okay, so my, my question to you is, when you see that Hillary had top secret classified information and the conclusion of Jim Comey, no prosecutor would ever prosecute, 33,000 subpoenaed emails deleted, devices destroyed. Okay, then we have... The FBI in early October of 2016 sent agents over the pond to meet with Christopher Steele. They offered him a million dollars to to verify any part of that dossier. To get Trump. Okay. They couldn't verify it. 
Then, in late October, even though it wasn't verified, they used that, according to Andrew McCabe, Deputy FBI Director, without that dirty dossier, they would never have gotten those FISA warrants approved. Now, they knew that they couldn't verify it. The Dura report confirmed none of it was true. And yet, they will use that as a backdoor to spy on your campaign and your presidency. Yep. Is that a dual system of justice? No, it's very, and the whole thing with Pfizer was horrible. But you know, one thing we did that was so great, I fired Comey very early. And a lot of people said, oh, you should have done it. Well, you know, they're given a term. They're given a term very early. Not immediately early, but very early, early in a few months. And I got rid of this guy. And by doing that, it was like you threw a rock at a hornet's nest. The whole thing collapsed. You saw the love letters back and forth with the different people talking about the insurance policy. You know what the insurance policy is. That was against me. That was how to... If she, for some reason, loses, darling, we have an insurance policy. The insurance policy is they'll get me out. One way or the other, they'll get me out. Because you know what? This is 30, 35 years of being put into government. And you get there... And initially, I didn't know people in Washington. I was there 17 times in my entire life. I never stayed over, never stayed over before this. All of a sudden, I'm president of the United States. I relent, and we had tremendous people also. Don't forget, biggest tax cuts in history, biggest regulation cuts in history, rebuilt our military, took out ISIS, took out Soleimani, took out al-Baghdadi, the two biggest terrorists in the world. I mean, what we did was incredible. Strongest border we've ever had. Everything was good. No inflation. Best economy in history. We did all of this stuff. We had tremendous, we had tremendous people. Look, they made a lot of money. Yeah. No, no, sorry. We had tremendous people. But we also had some. You rely on others. You rely on people that you knew. You rely on other politicians to give you answers. And you find out that they are uh, rhinos or they gave you bad advice. So we had some that weren't good. But when you think, uh, Comey had a term. He had many years left in that term. I said, this guy's bad news. I realized it very early, very early in the administration. I fired him. And it was wild. That's when we found out all of the corruption. Had I not fired Comey, you wouldn't know any of the things that you were talking you about. You think right they would have destroyed you? Well, they were trying to take me out. Yeah, they were trying to take me out. I mean, it was like a coup. It was like a coup. Had I not, you know, it's very interesting. Some people it. that are very smart, that you know very well, said when I did it, oh, that was a mistake, that was a mistake, you're going to cause... Now they say it was the greatest instinctual move they've ever seen because Comey was a very bad guy, and Comey led that group of uh, thugs in there, and they were doing a number. They were... It's very dishonest. It's years and years of putting in people, Democrats and rhinos and other people, but putting them into office... And we got rid of a lot of them, but we're going to get rid of a lot more, a lot more, because you have some bad people. One more question. Here. In the past, I think it's been a mistake. I, I'm like you. I, I think we should have paper ballots, same-day voting, make Election Day a national holiday, and have partisan observers in every precinct have. watching the vote, the voting, and then watching the vote counting, and when the polls close, declare a winner, game over. Right. But that's not the system we have. Republicans have been reluctant and resistant towards early voting, mail-in voting, and, it, and they've also been resistant towards legal ballot harvesting, which Democrats have mastered, which is why they can hide in their basement, run hundreds of millions of dollars in ads, and, and never answer a press question or shake a hand or kiss a baby or do a town hall. My question is, do you now encourage and embrace early and voting, voting by mail, and legal ballot harvesting. I do, but I also have to say something else, because the one thing a lot of people... But this is important. Including you, do. don't talk about. They also create phony ballots, and that's a real problem. That's my opinion. But they you, create but a lot of know, phony ballots. Has your mind shifted? In, in other words, I think if Republicans start out election day down... 200, 300, 500,000 votes, that's, that becomes nearly impossible to catch up with. For some reason, Republicans always wanted to go out on Tuesday and they wanted to vote. And I respect that. I think it's great. And it would be great if we could get back to one day and we all the things that you said with one thing I agree else, with you. With voter ID. With voter ID. Because the Democrats don't and want signature voter verification. How about this? They don't want voter ID because they want to cheat. You know, they want to cheat. They don't want voter ID. Even the Democrats, regular Democrat people, want voter ID, but the leaders don't because they can't cheat. 
The one thing we have to be very careful of is phony ballots. Everything you say is great, but they create ballots. That's my opinion, and that's the opinion of a lot of people. Will you encourage your voters, based on the system we have, to ha go along with the system of early voting and voting by mail? Because I, I, I think if you don't, you it's a big mistake. No, no, no. I will, but those ballots get lost also, Sean. You know, they send them in, and all of a sudden they're gone. Those ballots get lost also. The answer is I will because you would like it. But you well, know what? Can I be honest? For me. Okay. But a lot of, I got to take a break. But Sean, a lot of bad things happen to those ballots also. They're sent in early, and all of a sudden, where are they? Bad, look. We have very corrupt elections. We have no borders. If you don't have borders and if you don't have good elections, you don't have a country, and that's where we are. But I'm okay with it. By the end of, by the end of this year, we'll probably have, under Joe Biden, nearly 8 million illegal immigrants since he's been president. Quick, quick break. More of our exclusive town hall with President Donald J. Trump straight ahead. We're going to take questions from you. As we continue, we are in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, with the 45th and possibly 47th president of the United States. Donald Trump is with us. Um, you know, we had this whole issue of cocaine in the White House. Yeah. Okay. Um, I could only imagine what the reaction would have been on, in the media and, and with others about this. And here's what bothers me about it. They had a 10-day investigation. They have cameras on every single person that walked into that area. That's right. They didn't interview a single person. And after 10 days, they declared the investigation is over. We don't know who did it. Now, what's your reaction to that? So I know the area very well. It's uh, very private, actually, in a true sense. And they probably well, have more cameras. First, there was three different locations, to Yeah, be well, fair. they don't even know what location. And they also said the Bidens weren't there, and they were there. It turned out to be, you know, false. A lot of false reporting, a lot of misinformation. They dis and miss information, right? Nobody's ever explained the difference, but let's assume they're pretty close. Uh, you have more cameras in that area than any place probably in the world. You have the Situation Room. The Situation Room, I never even thought of it in terms of this, but probably the most important room anywhere in the world. There's no more important. Wars are decided, nuclear's decided, weapons are decided. It's been there. There's nothing more important. They have cameras. That, that's where you place. decided to take out Soleimani. That's where you decided to take out Baghdadi and Associates. Oh, Baghdadi. And the, right? Defeat ISIS. Don't forget, we defeated ISIS. I was told it would take three to four years to defeat ISIS, and we probably couldn't do it. I did it in four weeks, less than four weeks, right? And took out, took out the worst. But the Situation Room is very heavily guarded. They know who is. They know everything. The other thing, I have a great respect for Secret Service. I deal with them all the time. They are really incredible people. And Secret Service knows what's happening. They know what's happening. So. Uh, I think it's uh, very disappointing that after just a few days I was over. That's a big deal. Cocaine. Now, the cocaine, as they say, could have been worse. They could have gone to the, the bioweapons. They could have gone to a lot of other Anthrax. things. Anthrax. But co cocaine's pretty bad if somebody's taking cocaine and making decisions. What if there was fentanyl in it? What if it was anthrax? Well, it could have been a lot of God things. God forbid. It could have been a lot of things. And they have cameras. And I would imagine it doesn't stop here. But Secret Service is so incredible, they don't get enough, enough credit. And they're under the orders of other people. But I think Secret Service would be able to tell you the real answer. But you can't have a thing like that. The most embarrassing thing for our country, we were respected. Three years ago, this country was respected. And Putin knew he couldn't do it, and President Xi of China knew he couldn't do it. You know, I gave Iowa and farm, farmers, the farm, farm states, $28 billion from China, $28 billion. That's why I said, you know, I go around. I don't want to be too uh, boisterous on this, because you never know, right? But I said, there's no way I can lose Iowa and Nebraska, any of these states. There's no way, because I gave the farmers $28 billion from China. No person, no president's ever gotten 10 cents from China. I got hundreds of billions of dollars, and I went to the Secretary of Agriculture. How much has... I think they obviously got it. <laughs> but thank you. I love you, too, I will tell you that. But think of President Xi, central casting, brilliant guy. You know, when I say he's brilliant, everyone says, oh, that's terrible. We call it. Well, he runs 1.4 billion people with an iron fist. 
smart, brilliant, everything perfect. There's nobody in Hollywood like this guy. I got them to pay us $28 billion because they screwed our farmers for years. And I had the Secretary of Agriculture come up and I said, give me a number. They said, it's $28 billion. Comes back a week later, it's $28 billion. I said, that's a lot. I said, well, we're going to take it from China. I got $28 billion for the farmers. Who got a check? Did everybody get a check? And I also made the USMCA. We had the worst trade deal that we ever made, NAFTA. You got killed on NAFTA. And I made it the best trade deal, the USMCA. It's a fantastic, that's Mexico and Canada. I got billions and billions of dollars from Japan and other countries that were taking advantage. You couldn't sell into Japan. Did that money help pay for the wall? Uh, let me tell you what paid for the wall. What really helped? Mexico was, you know, they all say Mexico. Mexico paid much more than what I was asking for because I had 28,000 soldiers on the border when I was building the wall. And we built almost 500 miles of wall. And you know, our opponents, you know what they say? If there's a little rotted out two by four laying on the ground that's been there for 50 or 60 years and you can, they would say when we build a 30 and 40 foot wall, oh, that's just a renovation. That's not included. We built almost 500 miles of wall. We renovated a lot. Then I said, let's build another 200 miles because there were some areas that were weak. And it was all there, ready to be installed, and they didn't do it. But Mexico, I said to the president, you have to do me a favor. You have to do us a favor. We need 28,000 soldiers on the border, Mexican soldiers. He laughed at me. And you know, I have a very good relationship with him. But he said, but why would we do that? Because they're coming in through Mexico. You have to stop them from coming in from Mexico. They're coming in in caravans. He said, we can't do that. Then he had a representative come to see the State Department person. The State Department person said, you know, I've been doing this for years. We've always asked for a lot of different things, like remain in Mexico. I got remain in Mexico passed. Nobody thought it was possible. All of the different catch and release. How about this? You catch a criminal and you release him into the United States, okay? I got catch and release. But I got this and they said to me, we won't do it, we won't do it. They smiled, they laughed. They said, what are you, are you crazy? We wouldn't do this. I said, yes, you'll do it. Because if you don't do it, we're gonna put a 25% tax on right. all of your cars coming in from Mexico and you're gonna do it. We're gonna take in billions of dollars and we'll do it ourselves. So Mexico gave us billions of dollars of free soldiers, free of charge. You know, they came back into the room after saying, actually sort of laughing at me how stupid a question this was. They said, you think we're not going to do that? I said, yes, you will. You'll do that. He said, we're not going to do that. And I said, well, we're putting a tariff on all of your products, including all the cars that you stole, because, you know, they have 32 percent of our car business left from Mexico. I said, we're going, to put a, a third, we're going to put a tariff, 25%. It's going to go higher, but 25%, take in billions. He said, may I leave the room, please? Yes. He comes back five minutes later. We would be honored to give you $28,000. So Mexico, Mexico paid plenty. Let me go back to the China issue. Think of all the incidents we had, the Chinese spy balloon that, you know, went from yeah. the skies of Alaska down to Idaho, across to Montana, over Would have never sites, Kansas, Missouri, Kentucky, yeah. out, right. out the coast, the East Coast. And I look at the communist Chinese now confronting our Navy ships in international waters, confronting our fighter jets in international airspace, on top of intellectual property theft, on top of COVID-19, uh, on top of unfair trade practices, devaluation of the dollar, I believe attempts to eliminate the U.S. dollar as the world's That's currency. Right. They want to do that. They're working hard on it. And, that would and, be a disaster. And now they've aligned with Russia and Iran. And now they're negotiating and deals. And North Korea. And North Korea. Now they're negotiating deals between the Saudis and the Iranians and okay. the Saudis and the Syrians. Now, I think China is taking advantage of a president that has abdicated his role as the most dominant, America being the most dominant force in the world. Would they have ever done that under you, and how would you have prevented it? Number one, they wouldn't have done it. Number two, if they did it, I would have said, excuse me, we're going to put a 100% tariff on all of your goods that are coming into the United States. And they would have backed up immediately. You know, I took in hundreds of billions of dollars from China. And as I said, not one president for many presidents ever took in anything. You know, they revered China. I don't know. I also explained, hey, 
We all love China. Let's love China. Let's respect the president. Let's respect everybody. But they took advantage of the United States, making hundreds of billions of dollars a year. We built their military because they made so much money. I took in hundreds of billions of dollars from China. Do you think Taiwan is going to get invaded? Well, I think they have no respect for Biden. They have no respect whatsoever for him. It would have never happened. I met with Putin and I said, listen, if you do this, really, really bad things are going to happen to Russia. And I don't want to say because I'm not going to get into that. But I said, really bad things. He said, no, 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 you would never do that. I said, yes, I would. And he said, no, I don't like that. But, you know, maybe he didn't believe it, but he believed it 5 percent or 10 percent that that's all he needed. I said, bad thing. Said the same thing to President Xi. I had a great relationship with, frankly, both of them. And, you know, having a good relationship with these guys, they're smart, tough, and they have a lot of nuclear weapons. Having a good relationship, I tried to explain this to the fake news, that's a good thing, not a bad thing. There has no been, nobody's been rough on Russia like I have. I'm the one that ended Nord Stream 2. Nord Stream 2 is the big pipeline going into Germany and all over Europe. I ended it. That's the worst thing that any president or anybody has ever done to Russia. I ended their pipeline and the money that... And Putin said to me, how could you do that? I ended it. And Biden came in and he approved it. I put sanctions in. I gave the javelins, which are anti-tank busters, I gave the javelins to Ukraine. When they took out all those tanks, that was from Trump. You know what? Obama, you know, when they say, oh, Trump, Trump was good to Russia. I was the worst thing that ever happened. But I still got along with Putin and he respected me. And I got along with Xi and he respected our country. They no longer respect our country. Okay. You have said very boldly you could end this Ukrainian-Russia yeah. war in 24 hours. Yeah. How? So I know Zelensky very well because he was very honorable with the fake phone call, impeachment hoax number one. They said I made a phone call to him and I was very threatening. I wasn't at all. I was actually very nice. I was congratulating him on a victory. But when they asked him, they said, did you, were you threatened? He didn't even know what they were talking about. He was very honorable. He could have done grandstand. He said, yeah, I felt threatened. I felt threatened. He didn't do that. And as you know, I get along very well with Putin. I would tell Putin, got to settle. I would tell Zelensky, you got to settle. I would tell one, you're going to load up with money. I'd tell the other, you're not going to get any money. I would get a settlement in 24 hours. Now, it should have never happened. You have thousands, hundreds of thousands of dead people right now, hundreds of thousands. You have cities that are obliterated. I don't know if you've ever seen the cities after they finish with the rockets. You have cities with no building standing. It looks like just a demolition zone. It's so horrible. Sad. And you know, and then they'll say two people were hurt. No, hundreds of people and thousands of people were killed. You're going to find out when this whole thing is over that the number of people killed is far greater than they tell you. They're not telling you the truth. Many, many thousands, hundreds of thousands of people are dying. These cities are being obliterated. And basically, they say, what's your stance? Are you for Russia or are you for... I'm for one thing very simple. I want to stop people from getting killed. And I'll have it stop fast. Take a break. We'll come back. Up next, we'll talk about the 2024 primary. And one big question is the Biden family with their business dealings with China and Russia and Romania and Ukraine. Are beautiful Cedar Rapids, Iowa. What a great, fun crowd we have. With GOP frontrunner Donald J. Trump. And we continue. So we just got done talking about China, Russia, Iran, North Korea. And we have a little problem here, and that is the Biden family. Joe Biden said to this country repeatedly during your 2020 election, that he never once spoke with his son, Hunter, about his foreign business dealings. Yeah. Now, then we have Joe on tape bragging that he leveraged one billion taxpayer dollars to get a prosecutor fired in Ukraine. Right. Okay, and as a result, son of a bee, they fired him. And then Hunter continued to get paid. Hunter goes on Good Morning America. I have no experience in oil, gas, energy, or Ukraine. Why are they paying you all that money? He actually said, I don't know. I mean, a 50-year-old man. Okay, here's my bigger question, though. Now we know about the WhatsApp message, which said, I am sitting here with my father. And we now have photographic evidence. We have times and places of meetings of Joe and Hunter and farm business partners all meeting. And they have found all of these bank accounts. James Comer is now saying it's up to 30, maybe $40 million 
uh, in business, the Biden family. I want an answer to this question. Do you believe with all the millions that they did in business with China and Russia and Ukraine and Kazakhstan and Romania and, and, and Mexico and all these countries, is that why Russia got the Nord Stream 2 pipeline? Is that why there were no consequences for the spy drone uh, fly, that China sent? And, or their hostility towards our Navy and Air Force? So is, look, are, they, are they compromised? I think no question about it. Look, you have China paying millions of dollars just, just that one conversation, which sounded like a mobster conversation. Within Extortion. a week. They got $5 million. Then they got another $5.2 I guess, from the same group. So they got $10.2 million. That comes from China. And that's the only one that they've covered so far. I understand they have much more than that's that. That's the energy giant. And what about Ukraine? So we've given, and we want to help people. We, want, we have a heart. We got to help people, too. But we're in for almost $200 billion in Ukraine, and Europe is in for $20 billion. Why are we? And, you know, Europe is essentially the same size as us and the economy, if you add it all up. Europe and the U.S. are about the same size. Why is it Europe in for 200 or more than us? Why aren't they in? They're affected much more than us because nobody asked them. You know, I asked them for the money for NATO because the U.S. was paying for NATO. And Europe, by the way, treats us very badly on trade. Not so much anymore, but that's going to change because they're back to their old ways. But why aren't they? I got hundreds of billions of dollars for these countries by asking. All I had to do was ask. I asked. They said, are you going to protect us from Russia? I said, are you delinquent? They said, let's assume we were. I said, I will not protect you from Russia. And then the money started pouring. We got hundreds of billions of dollars coming in, and they were very happy. But. Look at Ukraine, where Hunter is getting hundreds of thousands a month, and like I guess, from what they say, a three million upfront payment to sit in an energy company, and he knows nothing about energy. Uh, the debate. So I had a debate, and Chris Wallace, who was terrible, he sure is not his father. He's not the great Mike Wallace. He wants to be, but he doesn't have the talent. But Chris Wallace is terrible. And I mentioned to him that why is the mayor of Moscow's wife paying the Biden family three and a half? million dollars. And he said, you shouldn't ask that question. I said, why not? And Joe was trying to answer it, but he couldn't answer it. It wasn't going well. And Chris Wallace cut me off. He said, you shouldn't. I said, I have two people I'm debating, not one. The one I definitely don't mind. But Chris Wallace, how's he doing lately, Chris Wallace? Not too good. No. Not too good. Like two people are watching his show. But here's the story. So Russia's giving them massive amounts of money. Ukraine's giving them massive amounts of money. And China's giving them massive amounts of money. And then there are many other countries also. It's horrible. It's horrible. They're compromised. Joe Biden is a compromised president. And you know what? Until I got indicted. Until I got indicted, I had such respect for the office of the president I didn't want to say things. I would do numbers on him and, you know, but you not like this. You actually yelled at me once for being too tough on him. No, I thought you were joking too much. I thought you should take it seriously because I think it's a I talked about problem. Joe and his cognitive, he's a cognitive mess. Everyone agree? Yeah. You know, so I, I no, was. No, but Sean was making sort of comedy out of it. And I said, honestly, Sean, it's a serious problem because we have, we're in the nuclear age and we have a man in charge of our country. You were right. Who doesn't have a clue. And I said, there's nothing funny about it. And nothing, I did tell him is, that. There is nothing funny. And he sort of changed a lot. And by the way, this man's doing very well on television. I don't know if you watch ratings, but his ratings are very good. I'll have to. Thank you. Because he never says. I always say, why don't you take a commercial saying how successful your show is, how good your ratings are? Nah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But uh, he's a good man, and he loves this country, I can tell you. But they are compromised, Sean. We have a compromised president. China gives him millions of dollars. If he's given Biden millions of dollars, he's compromised. Now, that's only the stuff they found. There's a lot of other things, and there'll be some things that you never find, but there's a lot of other things. So he's getting millions of dollars illegally from China. And then you say, hey, they impeached me over a phone call that was perfect. Why aren't they impeaching Biden for receiving tens of millions of dollars? Why isn't he under impeachment? I know we're, we're at a point where 60 some odd percent of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. Yeah. In my early adult life, I lived paycheck to paycheck. I could barely pay my rent. That was for a number of years. I know what it's like. It's not fun. Um, we have the average American now has $54,000 in debt 
Biden inflation has cost the average American household over $10,000 a year. We can't afford this. On top of $37 trillion in debt. How quickly and what would you do to get this economy turned around? It'll go so quickly. Number one, I'm closing that border like I had it. We had the best border. And by the way, I think you all agree. I think you all agree. We want people to come into our country, but we want them to come in legally. We had a good system. They were taking tests. We want people that love our, co our country, not people that want to blow up our shopping centers and our farms. So we, I want people, but I would make our border so strong and get off the criminals. We have many criminals in our country now that weren't here three years ago. I will get them out. Ice and so border burden on the economy. I will drill, baby drill. You know the expression. Drill, baby drill. You get energy way down. When energy comes down, inflation's gonna come down.